limestone and it breaks it apart and eventually a sinkhole is formed. That's pretty cool how that eroded. That's very cool how that eroded. These areas will be protected forever for years to come and generations to enjoy. stop is the 12 apostles although we've already seen the 12 apostles twice we are coming back for a third time one of the things that i want to see and learn this third time is the first two times we didn't go to the visitor center so i want to learn more about why these 12 apostles exist why there's only nine of them and the history behind it um, also side note the best time to come seems to be the morning because there's plenty of parking the visitor center was selling mostly souvenirs. We didn't really get a lot of information. So hopefully we find some along the trail. The Twelve Apostles Marine National Park is the second largest national park and san marine sanctuary in Victoria. And it holds the largest number of invertebrates on limestone reefs in Victoria. It's cool because marine parks protects 5% of the marine environment here. Um, from human disturbance. So that way these areas will be protected forever for years to come and generations to enjoy. Apparently the 12 apostles used to be called the So and Piglets, where the So was Lord Our Gorge, I think, and the Piglets were the apostles. Now, they think the name was changed because of tourists coming in the 1920s. One the cool things about the 12 apostles is that they are caused by eroding limestone. And so you can see remnants of old 12 apostles, like, you know, very low to the ocean. And then these are constantly changing and new ones are forming depending on cliffs, you know, breaking away from the ocean. No matter how many times you see the 12 apostles, it's amazing. Now we're on to our next stop. Just got a quick bite to eat. Had the breakfast, breakfast spot that we've seen closed for the past couple of days. It looked really good. So, got a cup of coffee, it's got an egg breakfast. sandwich. Good to go. Refueled. Now we are going to see the arch. This stop is already a lot nicer because there's no caravans or buses allowed, so it's not as touristy. It's an arch. Right there. Oh cool, it's kind of deceptive. It looks like it's all one piece. It's pretty cool how that eroded. That's very cool how that eroded. That 
That is so pretty. I really love watching the water come up on the rocks. It's kind of boring, but it's also really, really beautiful. Next up, London Bridge. We made it. And the beach is just amazing here. That clear blue water. The beach is almost as pretty as the rock formation. Looks like it has fallen down. That used to be connected. Wooden clay will wash away my fair lady. Okay. Less than a minute down the road and Come to the grotto. Probably each one of these rock formations are, are pretty cool. And I think what really makes it awesome is that they're all right here, um, just a few k's away from each other. water um, falls into a swampy area on land and then over time it seeps down through the clay to limestone and it breaks it apart and eventually a sinkhole is formed followed by a grotto and so we have a grotto and so it has this this particular area has this nice combination of both inland and seaward um, action kind of going on so it's the, the, the coast in this area is eroding from the ocean and from inland. So it creates this really beautiful space. One of the things I kind of love traveling, and especially to different places, is just hearing different languages being spoken. There's not really anything about it, it just sounds you know, exciting for some reason, even though we don't understand any of it. So far today we've heard Japanese, Chinese, Hindi, English of course. Uh, I think I also heard um, Arabic. I don't know if we've heard anything else, or at least recognized hearing. I think we heard a Nordic um, just now, a Nordic language, but I don't know. So, really cool. Okay, this is the last one Bay of Martyrs. It's like the 12 apostles, if there was like 30 of them and they were a little bit shorter. <laughs> okay, short stop. That was beautiful. We would have loved to have more time to walk along the beach, but we have like a seven, eight hour car ride left. So, gotta go. Actually, one more stop. Then we have our seven hour car ride. Just saw another brown sun. We just had to turn in. Ah, uh, here we go. <laughs> road and I think this is our that was our last stop for real <laughs> for real this time yeah so now we have about a seven hour drive to Adelaide we're in Warrnambool this is the last town along the Great Ocean Road it looks like there's a bike race that goes from Melbourne to Warrnambool yeah. and right over there there is the finish now that we've passed through Warrnambool we are officially done with our Great Ocean Road Trip. This road trip reminded us a lot of the Pacific Coast Highway in California. And we did that road trip about two years ago and we really, really enjoyed it. We had a great time learning about the geology along the Great Ocean Road and what makes this place so unique. Now we have about 600 kilometers until we arrive in Adelaide where we're spending the next two nights. And so the next vlog that you'll see will be 
when we're leaving Adelaide and we're going on a very exciting trip. Can't wait. Be proud. <laughs> Location. <laughs> She's out of breath. Come on. Run up the stairs. Mm, stop in for a pint. No, mate. We're driving. 